France and motorsport to Le Mans, home of one of the world's most famous races. The 24 Hours of Le Mans is the oldest and most prestigious race in the world. Held annually since 1923 near the French town of Le Mans, this race pushes the limits of both drivers and vehicles that are in it. This race, held on an 8 mile track, is pretty unique. There are other 24 hour races like Rolex 24 Daytona and the comical 24 Hours of Lemons. It's time now to turn this push into muscles. But not many endurance races use combined track and public roads, nor share its history. Unlike fixed distance races, whose winner is determined by minimum time, the 24 hour Le Mans is won by the car that covers the greatest distance in 24 hours. Racing teams must balance the demands of speed with their car's ability to run for 24 hours without mechanical failure. Now why am I talking about Le Mans on what's mainly a muscle car history channel? Well, while researching various images of third generation chargers to find the stance and look I wanted for my car, I came across the Olympia 1972 Dodge Charger that raced at Le Mans in 1976 and found exactly the look I wanted. But besides finding the look and stance I wanted for my car, I found a pretty cool story, so sit back, grab a can of Olympia beer, and enjoy. To really get into the story, we have to briefly cover the 1974 oil embargo. On October 6th, 1973, Arab forces launched a surprise attack against the Israeli forces during the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur. The war was over land occupied during the 1967 Six Day War. By October 9th, Arab forces were beating back Israeli forces and it looked like the war was going to be over. President Nixon ordered the start of Operation Nickel Grass and the U.S. began to start resupplying Israel with various war materials after the Soviet Union began sending arms to Arab forces. But this increased tension between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. On October 19th, OPEC declared an oil embargo against the USA and other countries for their support of Israel. On October 25th, with pressure from superpowers and improvements in Israeli positions, a ceasefire was reached. Despite a ceasefire though, the embargo carried on and by 1974, the price of oil had quadrupled in the United States. Through negotiations and Israel withdrawing from various positions, on March 17th, the embargo ended. So now you're thinking, Vic, what's this got to do with 24-hour Le Mans or American muscle cars in France? Well, because of the embargo and its effects on fuel costs, Countries were doing all sorts of things to ration fuel, and auto racing is a luxury. Stateside, in 1974, NASCAR cut all race distances by 10% and instituted a host of fuel-conserving measures. In France, the governing body of the 24-hour Le Mans, the AOC, put a 20-lap requirement in before refueling for the 1975 race. This change caused many of the top teams like Ferrari to decide that it just wasn't worth it to race. So the organizers of Le Mans, looking to add some buzz to their event and ensure they had enough teams for the 1976 event, approached NASCAR chairman Bill France Sr. about organizing an exchange between the 24-hour Le Mans and the 24 hours at Daytona. A new class was created for this, the Grand International class. NASCAR racers that competed in the GI class in 1976 24 hours of Daytona and placed in the top three could compete at Le Mans. Just eight teams prepared for the new Grand International class. And at the end of 24 Hours of Daytona, the car owned by John Holman, driven by David and Larry Pearson, and Jim and Gary Boucher placed first. James Hilton and Richard Childress placed second, and father and son team Herschel and Doug McGriff placed third in their Chevy Nova. Unfortunately for the winners, owner John Holman died, sidelining the team's plans to go to Le Mans. Second place finishers Hilton and Childress opted not to go, and their spot was filled by a June Dunleavy owned 1974 Ford Torino, driven by NASCAR racers Dick Brooks and Dick Hutcherson. So it was McGriff and the substitutes off to France. So who were the racers going to France? Well, they were a pretty accomplished group that weren't afraid of road courses. Herschel McGriff won the 1950 Carrera Pan America, a roughly 3,500 kilometer road race through Mexico that killed three people. And Dick Hutcherson had already been to Le Mans in 1966 as part of the GT40 program and finished third. Don Levy's team also added five-time Le Mans competitor and Le Mans resident Marcel Mignon. Unfortunately for the McGriffs, their Nova was sidelined shortly after Daytona with engine problems. This forced the team to turn to Doug's 1972 Dodge Charger sponsored by Olympia Beer. 
The Charger was shipped overseas with two 426 wedge motors and one 426 Hemi, all built by famed race car builder Ray Nichols. The engines were built with 1101 compression and tuned for 93 octane gas as per the rules. The Torino team, sponsored by Truxmore, took a different route and had used builder Bud Moore who built them low compression 4 351 cubic inch V8s. With the cars and teams sorted out, the NASCAR racers headed to France. The teams arrived and were immediate fan favorites by all accounts. The press dubbed the cars, and excuse my poor French, I haven't taken it since grade 9, Les Dos Monsters, or in English, obviously, The Two Monsters. Everywhere they went, a crowd followed. The cars were towed all over France in flatbed trucks so that people could see them. The crowds just weren't used to seeing race cars that big. The alleged 15 cases of Olympia beer that McGriff's brought over labeled as lubricant probably didn't hurt their popularity either. It's now Wednesday, June 9th, practice day. The best time by any competitor during the practice was by Renault Alpine A442 GP6 car. This car, which was specifically built for the race, turned a 3 minute 33.1 second lap time. The two NASCAR cars, struggling with the tight cornering, did not fare nearly as well. The Olympia Charger, driven by Herschel, ran a 4 minute 29.7 second lap time. The truck's Mortrino, driven by Brooks, ran a 4 minute and 38 second lap time. The times put them in the 47th and 54th pole positions. During the practice runs is when the McGriffs started to notice problems though. The gas they were supposed to be running was 93 octane, but when tested, it was closer to mid 80s. Now there's two ways to measure octane, research octane number and motor octane number. And of course, Europe and North America use different methods. This could likely explain the issue here as the numbers seem to work out. Check out this chart with the differences between them. This caused some serious pre-ignition issues destroying pistons in both wedge motors. In an attempt to fix the issues, the timing was retarded and the air fuel mixture was enriched in the Hemi. Fortunately for the Torino, its lower compression motor was able to handle the lower octane gas. Now what I think happened here was just an honest mistake. This gets a bit confusing, so feel free to pause and take it all in. Europe uses RON, the other measurement is MON, and the US uses the average of both. MON is generally 8 to 10 points less than a RON rating, so 93 RON plus 83 RON would average 88 octane. 88 octane would be no good in an 11 to 1 compression race motor. The European RON fuel standard would need to be closer to 98 octane to get something close to the 93 stateside standard equivalent. So whether it was Nichols or McGriffs, someone made a mistake on the team because teams trucks more seem to have gotten the message. It's now Saturday, June 12th, 1976, 4 p.m. race time. The 426 Hemi is now in the car. The Olympia Beer Charger and the trucks more Torino are at the starting line. The race starts and the two NASCAR racers are out amongst a crowd of tiny European racers. Out of place, but not outgunned, what they lack in braking and cornering, they try to make up in the straightaways. During practice, Herschel McGriff was able to get his Charger with a wedge motor up to 215 miles per hour, allegedly. The first lap of the Charger went uneventful, but by the third lap, while flying down the Mulsanne Strait, the high compression of the Hemi and the low octane gas took its toll. For a third time, a piston went, and that was it for Team Olympia. The truck's Torino, though, was still in it. Changing drivers every three hours or so while filling gas, the Torino kept running. That is, till about Sunday, June 13th at 3 a.m. 104 laps into the race, with Dick Brooks driving it, the clutch failed on the far side of the course. Unable to fix it on the roadside and unable to get it back to the pits, the race was unfortunately over for Team Trucksmore. 13 hours later, a Porsche 936 driven by Jackie Ix and co-driver Guy Van Lennep took the checkered flag after covering 2,964 miles. So there you have it guys, that's the story of NASCAR at the 1976 Le Mans, the one and only time ever that NASCAR has ever had a chance to go over and race in France. I thought it was a pretty cool story and uh, like I said it provided me some inspiration for what I want to do with my own car. Uh, as always, if you guys enjoy these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button, it does help a lot. And also, once again, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out the Instagram page because there's a lot of good content on there as well. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one when we give you another update on the Charger. Take it easy.